What's up guys? I am at a wedding here at the historic Wakefield Barn right outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. And today, because we have a little bit of extra time, I wanna kind of walk you through how I really pull off good audio at a wedding ceremony. And I'll be honest with you, this is something that over the last probably five, six years, we've been tasked with a lot at Bun DJ Company. We do hundreds of weddings a year, I would say, 70%, maybe 75% of those weddings that book us also book us to do ceremony audio. So as you know, I've got about 16 guys here in the Raleigh office. Each of them has their own ceremony rig. I'm the only one that has this one. This is the Sennheiser LSP 500. We're gonna get into more of that in a little bit and show you kind of how I transport it, how I use it. But anything that you use, just make sure of a few things. Number one, it's really good quality. Uh, sure, Sennheiser, EV, like those are my three go-to microphone brands. Please, please, please do not cheap out on your microphones for any part of DJing, especially for ceremony audio. If you're gonna cheap out, don't even do it. Please don't even take the job because you're gonna ruin somebody's audio for their ceremony. They're gonna be super furious. And before you even start DJing that day, you're, you're starting on the wrong foot. So please have good microphones, have really good gear. If you need help, my go-to wireless expert in the entire United States is at NLFX. It's Ben at NLFXPro.com. I'll put his email address down below. Ben at NLFXPro.com knows more about wireless than probably anybody I've ever talked to. He will even, before he sells you microphones for your area, he will do research and find exactly what channels are good for your area and send you those microphones in that frequency range. So he is so dialed in, please. Buy yourself from him because he knows more about wireless than anybody at any of the big box retailers. As always, subscribe to the channel, please, 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 because we put out brand new videos like this for DJs like you every single week. Give the video a like if you like it, and of course, leave a comment because I always personally like to go through, read them, and respond myself. So let's get into ceremonies. So here's what we're working with today. Check this place out. Is this beautiful or what? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous room. About 130 guests. One speaker's gonna do it, guys. You don't need to overdo it, especially when you're doing a room flip, which is gonna be another video here on this YouTube channel. But again, all you're gonna need is this one speaker for this particular ceremony. Everybody all the way to the back will be able to hear. Let me just point out one thing. The reason I didn't wanna be all the way back there is one, because I do have this little alcove where I can stay tucked in. Nobody's gonna be able to see me back there behind my speaker. And number two, if you look, this is a really long room. I didn't want those antennas to have to travel all the way up here when I can hide right over here. So if you're wondering why I'm up here kind of beside the bridal party, that's why. I always wanna be as close to the efficient as I possibly can be. I just, I hate the dropouts. The dropouts are the worst, guys. You know that. If you've been doing this for a while, you know it. If you, if you haven't been doing this for a while and you're about to get into ceremonies, unfortunately, no matter what you do, sometimes you experience it. It's just all about having the right gear, which we talked about a little while ago. All right, let's go. So just uh, like I said, using the um, Gator framework stand, you guys know I'm a big fan of this. I'll show you why in just a second when I put the speaker on top. Um, got a mic stand because they do have three readers today during the ceremony. I'm just gonna put that right over there until we find out from the wedding planner exactly where she wants the readers to stand. I got a brand new case here. You guys have never seen this because I've never used it, but uh, this is the SKB. This is the I-Series. These are my favorite ones because they don't weigh too much. And basically, I bought this for the Sennheiser speaker. I love this speaker, and you guys have seen me use it on videos before, but it was the bag was terrible. The wheels were too narrow, so when you rolled it behind you, it was just kind of like a wheeled suitcase it would wobble and flip over. And so I had my friends over at US Case uh, sell me the case and then they did the custom foam insert and you can see it is ready to go. I got my power cable, handheld mic, two lavalier mics and my shelf all in one unit. So for those of you who've never seen these Gator Framework stands, this is why I love them. They raise themselves. So I don't want to raise it too high because I still have to get access to the bottom of it or the back of it to run the mics, but 
That looks pretty good. You just lock it down. And then these speakers, you can pick up a little bit and get a little more tilt to them. It's a little too much. There we go. So don't even need this unless you're charging it, which I charged it last night. So we're good to go with that. Get my hand held out. I love these as well. I think this is Gator as well. Looks like a Gator. Yep. A uh, little laptop stand. You can find these on Amazon. Put the link down below. And I just use this for my iPad usually or to set the lavalier mics until I'm going to put them on the people. I actually got a little tackle box here for my lavalier mics. I think, yeah, it's Plano. It's definitely a tackle box. Got my lavs, the mics. I'm just going to run an iPad. So I have a uh, USB-C to 8th inch to RCA. And then I got my microphones. That's pretty much all I keep. Maybe a few batteries. So we're ahead of schedule. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do a sound check now, but I'll probably do another one closer to the ceremony, which is at 530. But uh, when we're contracted, we always start 30 minutes early with the prelude music. Uh, because they don't have musicians. We're doing the music. So we'll start at five o'clock. Like I said, it's a little past 3.30 now, but I'm gonna go ahead and just test the mics the first time and make sure we're good to go. So they're both powered up. Now we gotta power up our battery powered speaker. These do take a little while if you end up getting one, which is gonna be hard because I think they're discontinued and they're crazy expensive. But if you do get your hands on one, don't panic. They do take a little while the brains kind of have to power up and then it powers up the microphones as well. They do have two batteries in them. They look like drill batteries. There's one here and one here. And when the display comes up, you'll be able to see, it tells you how much juice you have in each battery. So even if you were doing a show and you could see one is dying, which would take several hours to happen, you can look over at the other one and see you still got a full charge and it'll automatically switch you over to that next battery. 98, 99. So like I said, I charged it up last night. Basically, the way I always run my microphones is I do lavalier one, lavalier two. I've actually got them labeled here, lavalier one. This is lavalier two, I got it turned off because we're not using it. And then I got this one labeled handheld. You can see this one's already coming through because it's still synced up. But what you never, ever, 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 ever want to do is not sync your microphones. So I'm going to do a channel scan right now. You always do them one at a time, by the way, like if, even if I was using all three. And you also want spacing between these numbers. Like you don't want them super close together, okay? So I'm gonna go and just do my, everyone's gonna be different, every model's different. This one has an easy setup. Scan new list and just give it a few minutes here to scan. Always, always, always. I don't care if it's your DJ mic on your rig or your ceremony mics, always, every time you go to a new location, scan your mics, please. So I hit the sync. Put my guy up here, boom, check mark, good to go. All right, check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. So you can hear this room is, you know, travels forever. I don't need more than one speaker. I don't need a massive sound system. People are gonna be quiet. There's no road noise, we're indoors. I'll be able to turn it up because I'm gonna be right here behind it if I need more. And then I always just walk around and really try and feel out where the bride, the groom, the officiant are going to be. And then that way I can make sure that we've got, you know, good sound. So you're just listening for any drops or feedback or anything like that. So check, check. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. So now we'll check the handheld. That one sounds good. Okay, so got the handheld. What am I gonna do before I even test it? Scan for an open channel. Oh. Lavalier one has been channel scanned and tested. Sounded good. We just scanned for a new frequency. Again, one is at 566, the other one is, is at 607. That is plenty far apart in frequencies. So we scan this one. Now we just need to walk around. Really, the handheld is different, you know, because I'm going to put it on a stand. And once we put it on the stand, that's where it's going to stay. So I'll find that out from the wedding planner usually in just a few minutes. I'm going to put it where I think it's probably going to go. We'll test it out. But we're also going to walk that whole area just like we did with the lavalier. 
Check, 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 check. One, two, 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 one. One, two, one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, one, two, three, four. Check, one, two. One, two, one, two. So basically what we do is we check the whole area. We double check and make sure we've got a good signal. No, no problems, no dropouts. And then the very last thing we'll do is put it on the microphone stand at the height that we think the reader is gonna be. Now, I usually put it you know, here or even a little bit low, somewhere around my height. But if I go up and find out that the reader, who's usually gonna be sitting in one of these front rows, is a little bit taller, I'll probably raise it up a little bit or a little bit shorter, I'll probably drop it down a little bit. And then of course, if I can speak to the reader before the ceremony starts, I'm gonna tell them, listen, when you get up there, don't do anything, don't touch anything. I'm standing right over there, I got your volume. As soon as you get to the mic, I'm gonna turn you up, talk a little louder than your speaking voice, try and get right up on the mic, don't touch it, good to go. So I spoke to the wedding planner, uh, she works here all the time. She was at the rehearsal last night. I don't go to the rehearsal personally. That is up to you if you guys want to go. I would say if you do go, I would charge as an extra service, to be honest with you. It's a lot of time and commitment, and usually you're gonna have to take a little Bose radio or something if they want music. But anyway, um, spoke to her. She said this is where they talked about having the mic. That's where I put it. Put it a little bit lower than me. They can always move it up or down. I'm obviously gonna be over there controlling it. Good to go. So just a few more tips I've got uh, over my years of doing these ceremonies now, so many every year. Uh, make sure you have tons of batteries, whatever your microphones hold. I always have tons of AA batteries. I've got them in that box. I got them in another box downstairs. I got more in my van, tons of batteries, okay? Now the other thing you're gonna wanna do is if you turn off your handheld or your lavalier pack, a lot of microphones the actual receiver box will start trying to search for those when they turn off and they will emit the worst sound you've ever heard, like this insane distortion. So if you're gonna shut them down in this hour that we have, go ahead and shut the whole rig down, which is what I'm getting ready to do right now. So it's not gonna burn any battery in the speaker or the microphones. And then I'm gonna come back up again before the guests get here, do one more mic check, just like I did before. You don't need to see that again. It's gonna be the exact same sequence I might even do another mic scan, like a scan for open frequency, walk around, make sure the mic's hit, good to go, and then we're gonna get started. Okay, so here we are, it's 4.30. The actual invitation printed time of the ceremony is 5.30, but again, we're gonna start at five o'clock with the prelude music. I got the iPad charging up, got the microphones off for now. I've already replaced their batteries. So I'm probably getting ready to go do one more scan, one more walk around with the mics, and then be ready for my cues from the wedding planner. I'll have a clear line of sight. They don't have a very big wedding party today. It's only a couple of people, I think. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. Mic stand is in place for the readers. Again, once I check these mics again, I'm gonna be ready to go. Start some music right at five o'clock. Make sure the guests hear something when they walk in so it's not awkward. You know, I will say this, and this, is, this goes for veterans and, and newbies alike. This is the most nerve wracking part of your day. This is the part that you know sets the tone for the entire day. There's no do overs. So if you're nervous going into the ceremony, you should be because it is a very important part of the day. You wanna make sure it goes perfect. You wanna make sure it goes great and that you know the client is happy to start the entire day. So keep that in mind. You should be nervous because it is super important and you wanna do a great job. So one thing I did want to mention that we didn't show here in this video. So I walked downstairs and the guy that was officiating the wedding, I put the lavalier mic on him. And first thing I made sure I had brand new batteries. The second thing I always do is I make sure that mic is already hot and he was muted at the speaker. You don't want to give somebody a mic and show them some button they have to fiddle with or whatever. It is not going to go well. Give them a hot mic always. New batteries, hot mic, and I promise you things will go much better. And then basically, if you want to have you know, a contingency plan, you can always tell the efficient, look, there's a mic for the readers right over to your left. If all goes crazy, walk over there and take it off the stand. So those are my tips for micing up somebody and uh, on with the ceremony. Bye.
my pleasure to introduce your bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Timothy and Sarah Seward. So what do you guys think? That was a beautiful ceremony in a beautiful location, don't you think? Sound went great because we did all the things I talked about at the beginning of this video. I hope you guys learned something. I promise you this is a critical part of a DJ's job. It is super important that you know how to run audio, that you get good gear, and that you offer this service because you have the potential of losing a show if you don't offer ceremony audio. Absolutely critical. If you have any questions, let me know or leave a comment below. I'm going to respond to it. Thanks as always for watching, guys, and we'll see you back next week, every Thursday. Peace.